Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you.
stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? No one. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken. Cause I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. Cause he's never let me down.
Walking around these walls, I thought by now they'd fall, but you will never fail me yet. Waiting for change to come. Knowing the battle's won For you will never fail me yet Promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness in your hands this is my confidence you've never failed me yet and I know the nights won't last your word will come to pass My heart will sing your praise again Cause Jesus, you're still enough Won't you keep me, keep me within your
tent and I believe I'll see you do it again you made a way where there was no way and I believe I'll see you do it again I've seen you move you move the mountains and I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way. Yes, where there was no way. And I believe. I'll see you do it again. I've seen you move. You move the mountains. And I believe. And I'll see you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that in Jesus we can be confident. Thank you that as we look back, we know that you have been there guiding and supporting us. Thank you for every experience of your blessing. Thank you for the grace and the gift of worship. Thank you that in worship we can express all that we might otherwise find hard to say aloud and begin to give you the glory which your grace deserves. So come, I pray today, fill each of us afresh with your Holy Spirit. Speak to us, encourage us, Prepare us for the year ahead. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. How lovely to see you. Welcome, St. Margaret. It's great to see you. Thank you so much for coming. Welcome, too, to those of you who are joining us online. Welcome especially to those of you who came last week expecting a service and went away disappointed. And for those who came on the 18th of December and expecting one then and went away disappointed, fortunately, I was able to see you and encourage you. And uh, last week, I suggested that we stayed and I did some a cappella worship for... Anyway, that was turned down and everyone went to lunch. Uh, but that was probably a far, far better thing, as the scriptures say. But it is great to be back here and to see you all. Um, yes, and now I think we have a reading from Beth. We do indeed have a reading. Um, so th this afternoon's reading is taken from Matthew, beginning at ch chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Um, the words will come up behind me, um, but for those of you who like to read from the Bible, it's on 914, page 914. The Magi visit the Messiah. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem 
and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. I was so excited at seeing everybody so excited at worship that I entirely forgot to thank the band. Thank you so much for that lovely worship. And to you, Will, who we rather hoped would, well, you hoped and we hoped that your knee would be better after that operation. It's not that he's um, doing a Val Dunican thing, but he can't stand. So it's great. Thank you so much for doing that. Of course, I suddenly realized no one here is old enough to remember Val Dunican, but never mind. That's uh, one of those moments where I suddenly give way, that I'm really ancient, uh, which is awful. One of the great things about the Christmas holidays, of course, is you, uh, you, the timing of the day slightly changes. And one of the things that I particularly enjoyed, I have to say, on the day last days last week when the church was open and the, the office was functioning again, and I was telling people, no, there is no service, terrible, terrible shame on me, really, was that we were able, I was able to kind of go slow, listen to Radio 4, and li instead of coming here at quarter past half past seven and opening the church so that those who wanted to pop in for a pray before work could do so. And one of the great interviews on that uh, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. or 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. program uh, during the Christmas holidays, an interview between the, uh, ch the CEO of GSK and the Archbishop of Canterbury. Not a couple that one would normally have put together, but they got on very well, and they were really very interesting. She was a really impressive woman, just as he was. I, I mean that, even though he's my boss. But I mean, uh, he was very good. He was very interesting. At one point, she said, I look into 2024, and particularly into January, and think, it's a really bleak year. It's a terrible time, January. We don't know what the year's going to happen, what's going to happen to the markets, uh, what's going to uh, happen in the election, uh, what's happening internationally. She said, it's a really bleak year. I feel very unsettled at the start of 2024. The archbishop brilliantly came back and said, well, if you talk to an archbishop, he's going to talk about hope. And he's talking about, and I'm talking about hope, he said, because I have absolute confidence in the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I trust him, whatever it looks like in the near, in, in, in the near ground, as it were. And Matthew writing this gospel would have said, Amen, hallelujah to that. For particularly in these well-known verses at the start of the gospel, he's essentially saying, be confident in God. Whatever it feels like, you can be confident in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's a God that doesn't let us down, he's saying through these verses. A God who always keeps his promises. Writing this gospel... Uh, Matthew was aiming particularly at his Jewish 
contemporaries, which is why there are so many quotations, so many allusions in the Jewish scriptures, what we call the Old Testament. Reading through the first 12 verses of chapter 2 can be a bit like playing a game of prophecy bingo. You see, ah, I've got it, that's there, or oh, I see what you're doing. You get a real sense of excitement as you pick up the different quotations or allusions in the passage. There are quotations from Isaiah and Numbers and Proverbs, Song of Songs and Malachi. When they're not direct, the imagery is straight from those books. And Matthew's Jewish contemporaries, reading this 20 years, 25 years after the resurrection, would have been thinking, ah, yes, in Jesus, we definitely have encountered the Messiah, the promised one. He's come at last, they would have said. We can be sure that in Jesus, God has fulfilled all those hundreds of prophecies which we've been waiting for him to fulfill. It hadn't been easy over the centuries, over the decades, over the years, sometimes trusting God. Even when they'd done so, when they'd held on to their trust, they would have been asking about his timings. What why nothing had happened, whether they'd missed it, whether events had overtaken him, or whether they'd got it wrong and not heard correctly. Through these verses, God uh, wanted to encourage them and today wants to encourage you and me. He will keep his promises. He's utterly unequivocal about that. Even though we too may have problems sometimes with his timing. But he says then, don't worry. Don't doubt. Don't give up. Have confidence in me. I will always produce the goods. And at the start of this year, we're to ask the Holy Spirit to remind us, each of us, of the promises that he's made to us. Ask, too, that, we would, that God would not only keep those promises, but fulfill them quickly, while also saying, Holy Spirit, please help me if I've got the timing wrong. For renew in me the confidence that God will keep his promises. But God also wanted those who read these verses and read Matthew's gospel to be excited about the difference Jesus could make. It was a bleak morning when the CEO of GSK uh, uh, broadcast that interview. I have to say, I got up to make myself a mug of tea, opened the curtains and closed them again. I just thought, this is not a morning when human beings should be seen out in the streets of the city of London. Uh, but in this first chapter, uh, Matthew reminded his, his readers uh, that Jesus was descended from King David. And the only other descendant of King David who'd been visited by visitors from the east had been David's eldest son, Solomon, and the Queen of Sheba had visited him. She'd heard of his reputation, his wealth, his wisdom, his success, the splendor of the organization that he had it. She'd come to see everything about which she'd heard. And before she went back home, she spoke to Solomon about how amazing everything had been. But she added, I've only heard half the story. Everything I'd heard had been an understatement of the reality. 
what had, everything uh, that God had done had, through, in Solomon's life had exceeded all she'd been aware of. And through Jesus, God is saying to us today, we have only experienced a proportion of the blessings that he has for us. There is more to come. Don't let how we feel at the moment or what we've received from the past shape our expectations for the future. We need the faith to be filled with expectation that this year, he will build on the blessings that he's already given us. He says, let me renew your confidence in me. I want you to be totally confident. Let me renew your ability to hear me so that you'll hear the promises that I want to give you. Let me raise your expectations so that you will expect even more blessing than you've already received. I would love to, all of us to receive prayer for that today. If you feel that actually you need your confidence renewed in God's timing, that what you've expected hasn't yet appeared, but you want more confidence, so you remain steady. James will be there in front of the communion table, the altar at the back, just going to pray a prayer over some of you. Others will want to say, I want to have that vision of a greater blessing. Uh, I want to be filled with expectation. And Nick will be over here by the piano, ready to pray for anyone here. And some of us want to say, I want to hear him better. I've not been hearing very much recently. And Bev will be over there by that rather historic piece of furniture. Uh, and we'll pray for you there. Just go to wherever you want particular prayer. Move between them if you want. But God, as the Archbishop said, wants us to be confident because we have a hope in Jesus Christ.
inside you Open up my eyes in wonder Show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love To those around me Fill us with your love us with your power will not fear what tomorrow brings you with us you are for us God is for us God is for us darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus you silence fear and Jesus Jesus cause you made the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus and Jesus Jesus cause you made the darkness tremble Silence here, Jesus, Jesus. You made the darkness tremble, Jesus. know that whatever this week, whatever this month, whatever this year might hold, Father, that we have a God who is for us, whose promises never fail. I pray you keep our hearts close to you this week, Lord, that we would know you in every moment, we'd know your promises to us, your spirit in us. Thank you.